845 this is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation the news edited by Jay Yogaraj and read by Lamani Vijayathunga first we take a look at the headlines president wickramasinghe pledges to safeguard sri lanka's economic initiatives in the indian ocean the president vows swift action if sri lanka's economic rights are compromised Minister of Agriculture assures that effective measures will be taken to prevent the price hike of eggs during the festive season. No litter gas price revision for the month of March. Dates announced for GC ordinary level, advanced level and grade 5 scholarship examinations. Agreement inked to construct hybrid renewable energy system in Jaffna. Heat index advisory issued for parts of the country. In news overseas, South Korea's Yoon vows to overcome history, strengthen ties with Japan. And in sports news, Sri Lanka's relay quartet bags bronze. Those are the headlines and now let's move on to the details of the local news. The president vows swift action if Sri Lanka's economic rights are compromised. President Ranil Wickremesinghe has pledged to take action if the economic rights of Sri Lanka are harmed at the Red Sea. He also stated that Sri Lanka would work to provide the necessary support to the United Nations organization whenever there are problems with peace in the region and the world. The head of state made this statement when attending the Sri Lanka Air Force Cadet Officers Commissioning Ceremony held on Thursday afternoon at the Air Force Bay in Chennai in Trincomalee. Highlighting Sri Lanka's historic commitment to safeguarding world peace and regional stability, the president emphasized his readiness to make decisive decisions for global peace. He underscored the responsibility and accountability of the armed forces in achieving this objective. The night commission in parade held at the Air Force Base in China Bay, Trincomalee, marked a historic milestone for the Sri Lanka Air Force being the first of its kind in its history. Commander in Chief President Wickremesinghe upon his arrival at the base was greeted with pride and respect as he received Air Force honors highlighting the significance of the occasion. 16 female cadet officers from number 36, 37 and 38 courses at the Kotalamala Defence University along with 36 cadet officers from number 65 and 66 courses and 5 female officers from number 17 and 18 courses and a US 2023 cadet officer was appointed to the authority. During the ceremony, President presented awards for five cadet officers and one female cadet officer who demonstrated exceptional performance during their training. President Ranil Wickremesinghe emphasized the Sri Lanka Navy has been entrusted with the responsibility of safeguarding Sri Lanka's oceanic territories including the Indian Ocean region. He underscored that the nation's economic initiatives will not be permitted to suffer any harm in the Indian Ocean. Additionally, president highlighted the historical context of the closure of the Suez Canal for a decade during the 1967 Israeli-Arab War and its effects on the club of ports operations. He emphasized the imperative of ensuring the security of the Suez Canal and the Red Sea to safeguard the economic interests of the country's ports. President Ranil Wickremesinghe made these remarks while delivering a speech at the Presidential Fleet Review of the Sri Lanka Navy held this morning at the Trincomalee Harbour. As the Commander in Chief, President Ranil Wickremesinghe was warmly welcomed with a guard of honour by the Sri Lanka Navy upon his arrival at the Trincomalee Naval Base. During the ceremony, the President awarded President Colours to Sri Lanka Navy's Special Boat Quadrant with their dedicated efforts in advancing the country's maritime aspirations and ensuring the security of Sri Lanka's oceanic territories. The event was further enhanced by a naval display performed by the Navy Special Boat Squadron and other warships. The Department of Examinations has announced the dates for the competitive school examinations which are slated to be held in the year 2024. Accordingly, the GC Advanced Level Examination for the year 2024, 2023 GC Order Level Examination and 2024 Grade 5 Scholarship Examination are scheduled to be held this year as per the Department of Examinations. The scheduled dates are as follows. 2023 GC Ordinary Level Examination from the 6th of May to the 15th of May 2024. 2024 Grade Five Scholarship Examination September 25th to September 15th 2024. 2024 GC Advanced Level Examination from the 25th of November to the 20th of December 2024. 
Meanwhile, the Commissioner General of Examinations, Amit Jayasundara, said that the dates for the 2024 GC ordinary level examination will be announced later. This is a news from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. And we continue with more local news. Sri Lanka has signed an agreement for the development of a hybrid renewable energy system on the three islands belonging to the Jaffna district today. Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekhar stated that under the full financial grant of 10.995 million US dollars extended by the government of India, the islands of Delft, Analithivu and Nainathivu will receive the hybrid renewable energy systems by March 2025. Under the project, 530 kilowatts of wind power, 1,700 kilowatts of solar power, 2,400 kilowatts of battery power and 2,500 kilowatts of standby diesel power systems are planned to be constructed on the three islands in the Jaffna district by India-based U Solar Clean Energy Solutions, according to the minister. Taking to X, formerly the Twitter, to announce this, Minister Vijay Sekhar expressed gratitude to the government of India, the Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Shantosh Jha, former High Commissioner Gopal Bagle, officials of the Indian High Commission in Sri Lanka for the assistance extended in this regard. The Cabinet of Ministers in December 2023 green-lighted a proposal to award the contract to use solar clean energy solutions based on the recommendations furnished by the Standing Procurement Committee. Even though the gas prices in the world market fluctuate, Little Gas Lanka Limited has decided not to effect a price revision for this month. Little Gas Lanka chairman Budi Zapiris told the Daily Mirror that the company has decided to continue the gas prices announced for February for this month as well. As per the decision, the current litro LP gas rates are as follows. The retail price of a 12.5 kg cylinder of gas will remain at 4,250. The 5 kg cylinder will stay at 1,707 and the 2.3 kg cylinder at 795 rupees. And to conclude the local news, the headlines once again. President Vikram Singh pledges to safeguard Sri Lanka's economic initiatives in the Indian Ocean. The President vows swift action if Sri Lanka's economic rights are compromised. Minister of Agriculture assures that effective measures will be taken to prevent the price hike of eggs during the festive season. No literal gas price revision for the month of March. Dates announced for the ordinary level, advanced level and grade 5 scholarship examinations. Agreement eager to construct hybrid renewable energy systems on Jaffna Islands. Heat index advisory issued for parts of the country. And that was the local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Paveda Mahatma. The main news story for tonight, the prices of egg has gone up to 60 rupees despite the production cost remaining at 30 rupees. As a result, it is suspected there is an egg mafia in the market. The Livestock and Health Department recommends a maximum price for eggs should be declared by the government to overcome this situation. A crucial discussion in this regard was held this afternoon at the Agricultural Ministry Auditorium under the patronage of Minister Mahinda Amaravira and State Minister D.B. Herat. Some errant traders are increasing the egg prices, focusing the forthcoming Singhala and Hindu New Year festival. Those traders are trying to create an artificial egg shortage in the market. Minister Mahinda Amaravira said effective measures will be taken to overcome this challenge. The government will declare a control price for eggs in the near future, the minister added. And that was the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. And in Washington tonight, the Department of Meteorology has cautioned the people of rising atmospheric temperatures at some places in the northwestern, western, southern and Sabrakamo provinces and in the Mandar districts in the coming hours. The advisory issued at 3.30 p.m. today will be in effect until tomorrow evening. Heat index, the temperature felt on human body, is expected to increase up to caution level at some places in the northwestern, western, southern and Samaragoma provinces and in the Manar district it warned. As per the advisory, under this level of temperature, fatigue is possible with prolonged exposure and activity. 
continuing activity could result in heat cramps. Thus, the members of the public are advised to stay hydrated, take breaks in shade as often as possible, and limit strenuous outdoor activities. They are also requested to check up on the elderly and the sick, and never leave children unattended inside vehicles, and to wear lightweight and a white color or light colored clothing. The heat index forecast is calculated by using relative humidity and maximum temperature and this is the condition that is felt on our body. This is not the forecast of maximum temperature. It is generated by the Department of Meteorology for the next day period and prepared by using global numerical weather prediction model data. And that came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Headlines of the World News, Bangladesh fire, at least 46 dead in Dhaka, building blaze. South Korea's Yoon vows to overcome history, strengthen ties with Japan. Japan marks 70 years since boat was exposed to radiation in the Pacific. Those are the headlines and now let's move on to the details of the World News. A huge fire that broke out in the multi-story building in the Bangladeshi capital, Dhaka, has killed at least 46 people and injured dozens of others. According to local media, the blaze began in a restaurant on the seventh floor property around 2200 hours local time on Thursday. 75 people were rescued and dozens taken to hospital. The fire was brought under control after two hours. South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol has emphasized his intention to further develop his country's relationship with Japan by cooperating to overcome historical issues. Yoon delivered a speech on Friday at a ceremony marking the 105th anniversary of the start of an uprising on March 1, 1919 against Japanese colonial rule of Korea. Yoon said South Korea and Japan are working together to overcome the painful past and moving towards a new world. He pointed out that the next year marks the 60th anniversary of the normalization of the diplomatic relations between the two countries. People took to the streets in central Japan's Zuyu city to mark the 70th anniversary of a fishing boat's exposure to radiation from a U.S. hydrogen bomb test. The incident occurred at Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. The Daigo Fukurumaru was based in the port city of Shizuoka Prefecture. It was contaminated by radioactive fallout from the nuclear test on the 1st of March 1954. And that was the world news. Development News. And in Development News, Eddie Hadiyave is the national career of United Arab Emirates will increase the frequency of flights operations to Colombo effective from 1st May 2024. The UAE airline, which has 10 weekly flight frequencies at present, will be operating 13 flights a week from 1st May 2024, that is two flights on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and one flight on Wednesday, and 20 flights per week from the 15th of June, that is three flights on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and two flights on Wednesday. This will be a significant contribution to boost the tourism industry in Sri Lanka and travel to the Middle East and other key destinations in the world in a statement it said. And that was the development news. Moving on with sports news. Sri Lanka earned a bronze medal in the women's 4 into 200 meter freestyle relay on the fourth day of the 11th age group swing championship in the Philippines. The race took place in New Clark City yesterday. The team, led by captain Minagi Rubasinga, Anika Sumratilaka, Linara Gunasekara and Saneshi Herat, Sri Lanka's women relay team, completed the race in 9 minutes and 52.22 seconds. The medal marks Sri Lanka's first and only medal in the tournament, which includes 45 nations competing. The championship will conclude on the 9th of March. That was the sports news. Business news coming up. Go ekatiana youth ticket life again change at a near meta set in Kukina have a karana Youth ticket near meta set in a friendship betamina. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business news sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. 
Bank of Ceylon reported a profit before tax of 40.3 billion rupees for the year ended 31st December 2023. The Bank of Ceylon Chairman and President's Council, Ronald C. Pereira, stated that the bank has successfully navigated all headwinds that came across during the past few years and the intermediate measures were taken strategically and ensured the business continuity and uninterrupted services to the valuable stakeholders. That was the business news. Economic news follows. Business news sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiyana youth ekatha life ke change ekatha niyamita se penna. Aswa hage na dekh puri na hame karna. Youth ekatha niyamita se penna friendship ekatha menna. The all new NSB Itro Mitro account NSB I am a plan for your dream. In economic news, chairman of China Communications Construction Company Limited, Wang Tongzhu, said that they will reinvest 300 million US dollars for the phase two of the infrastructure development of the port city Colombo. He made this pledge to President Ronald Wickremesinghe when visiting CCCC delegation met with the president on Tuesday. Tongzhu said that by June this year, the company plans to invest a total investment of approximately 300 billion US dollars. The chairman. Informed the president that CCCC will put in more resources to accelerate construction and development and enhance the global marketing and promotion efforts. That was economic news. And the weather report to conclude. Weather report. And finally, the weather report. The weather department says showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in the Kalutara, Ratnapura, Gaul, and Mathura districts in the evening or night. Mainly dry weather will prevail elsewhere in the island. Fairly strong winds, about 40 kilometers per hour, can be expected at times in the northwestern province and in the Hambantota district. The public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during thunder showers. This is when the report was published this evening at 7:30 p.m. Further details could be obtained by visiting the official website of the department. And before we conclude this bulletin, let's get back to the headlines once again. President Wickremesinghe pledges to safeguard Sri Lanka's economic initiatives in the Indian Ocean. The president vows swift action if Sri Lanka's economic rights are compromised. Minister of Agriculture assures that effective measures will be taken to prevent the price hike of eggs during the festive season. No liter gas price revision for the month of March. Dates announced for the ordinary level, advanced level, and grade five scholarship examinations. Agreement aimed to construct hybrid renewable energy systems on Jaffna Islands. Heat index advisory issued for parts of the country. In news overseas, South Korea's Yoon vows to overcome history, strengthen ties with Japan. And in sports news, Sri Lanka's relay quartet bags. Brats. And with that, we conclude this bulletin of news. And now it's back to your regular Friday evening host, my good friend Southie, on the other side of the glass panel to keep you entertained.